TrainerTest.com provides practice exams for the VMware VCP with this and many other embedded videos. Go to TrainerTests.com and try a free demo today. A high availability cluster includes master hosts and slave hosts. Let's take a look at what happens when one of those slave hosts fails. And we're not talking about simply an, a, a management isolation or some kind of network isolation event. We're talking about a true failure of that ESXi host. So under normal circumstances, the master will always be sending heartbeats to all of the slave hosts and the slave hosts will be sending heartbeats to the master. But in this case, one of our hosts has failed. Well, now the master must determine, is that host truly down or is it just isolated from the management network? So the master will try to ping the host and determine, hey, I can't ping ESXi04. So then the master will check on the data store heartbeat of host ESXi04 and realize that the lock file is now unlocked. And that means that that host must be down. So at this point, any virtual machines that were running on that failed host will begin to boot up on other hosts. And if you've configured restart priority on your virtual machines using VM overrides, the virtual machines with the highest priority will boot up first. So that's a slave host failure. Let's take a look at what happens when the master host fails. So again, under normal circumstances, the master sends heartbeats to the slaves, the slaves send heartbeats to the master, but in this case, the master host has failed. So now all of the hosts have stopped getting heartbeats from the master and all of the slave hosts realize this is the situation because they all normally receive these heartbeats from the master. At this point, an election kicks off and the host with the access to the most data stores will win the election. If it's a tie, the UUID of the host will act as a tiebreaker. So in this case, let's assume ESXi04 has now become the master. Once ESXi04 wins that election, it has a few things that it needs to do. Number one, it needs to try to ping ESXi01 to determine if that old master host is truly down or not. So it will try and ping it. And when the ping fails, ESXi04 will check on the data store heartbeat of ESXi01 to determine if it's truly down. And yes, in this case, that lock file of ESXi01 is unlocked and therefore ESXi04 knows that now, not only is it not responding to management traffic, but it's also disconnected from the storage array. So at this point, any virtual machines that were running on ESXi01 will start to boot up on other hosts. Now I may choose to deploy vCenter as a virtual machine that runs inside of an HA cluster. And so let's say that vCenter is running as a virtual machine on ESXi04. Well, what happens if ESXi04 fails? vCenter goes down. Does HA continue to operate? Absolutely. Because we have something running inside of our host called the Fault Domain Manager or FDM. And the FDM is going to ensure that that vCenter server gets rebooted on some other ESXi host. And then vCenter will begin to function again. Now, just a shameless plug here, if you're using this course to prepare for the VCP exam, check out trainertests.com. And the reason I say it's a shameless plug is because I've recorded many of these videos and written many of the questions for the VCP exams there. Okay, finally, let's look at what happens if a guest operating system failure occurs. Okay, so here we see a virtual machine with VMware tools running on it. And we've chosen to, to do virtual machine level monitoring with HA. So when this virtual machine fails, what happens is VMware tools stop sending heartbeats. Maybe the virtual machine is crashed or maybe just VMware tools is crashed and the virtual machine is still working. 
So the other thing that'll happen is once VMware Tools stops sending those heartbeats, the host will check and see if there's any IO coming from this VM, just to make sure that the virtual machine is truly down. And if there's no heartbeats from VMware Tools, and if there's no IO coming out of this VM, high availability will simply reboot that virtual machine right there on the same host. To learn more about these concepts and to prepare for your VCP exam, go to www.trainertests.com. These practice exams include this and many other embedded videos. And you can try a free demo. There's a 100% money back guarantee and it has over 170 questions. And as you answer those questions at the end of the exam, it'll tie them all to the exam blueprint and show you which areas you need to work on. So there's really no better way to prepare for the VCP6 exam than to go to www.trainertests.com and try one of our practice exams.